Hello everyone, I'm Reverend Robin DeAngelis and I welcome you to the Groveland Congregational United Church of Christ online worship service. If you are hungry, if you were thirsty, if you are lost, if you were a stranger, you're afraid, you're sick, imprisoned, if you are broken or whole, you are welcome here. Here we promise to embrace all people in their joys and sorrows as we walk together in action and faith. We journey in the path of Christ's footsteps with others of every race, ethnicity, creed, class, culture, age, gender, family structure, physical or mental ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression. Because no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. Moreover, you are a beloved child of God. Good morning, my name is John Statham, and I will be your uh, worship leader this morning. Please refer to the Friday email for each important GCC news. If you are not on the email list, go to our website at grovelanducc.org. You are welcome to follow along this morning on the church bulletin, which was also sent on Friday and can be found on Facebook. And now I invite you to take a deep breath Breathing in the breath and the Spirit of God as we prepare our hearts and minds to worship God.
Please join me in the call to worship. On this new day, in this new year, we gather. On this new day, in this new year, we pause. On this new day, in this new year, God is, God was, God will always be. The light shines in the darkness, the new day begins. And we, God's people, praise God's new day. We will now sing the hymn, Who Would Think That What Was Needed? Forgive us, merciful God, for walking around your world with our eyes closed to the beauty and wonder of creation, its fragility and hurt, and your presence in both. Remind us of those rare, precious moments when we have seen your glory and open our eyes to see it again. Forgive us for this and all we have done to neglect you among us. God has heard our plea for forgiveness. God's grace is poured out upon us and we are forgiven.
what child is this? This is a time in our worship service where we share our joys and concerns with one another and lift them up to God in prayer. Oh God, hear our prayers. For Roberta, just diagnosed with stage two breast cancer. For Stephanie, for good health outcomes. For those who are grieving, for the unhoused, those living in fear, those struggling with mental illness or loneliness, for our church, that we continue to be a beacon of light for our community and beyond. That the new, more contagious strain of COVID-19 will not disrupt efforts to bring the pandemic under control. For our country at this time of transition and for Jacqueline with health concerns. And now let us spend a few moments with God in the silence of our hearts. Holy God, you have broken through the darkness once again and shown your light upon us. You've promised to be the light in our life for all of our days. In the person of your Son, Jesus, you have shown us the way we should live. You have poured your light into the world and have asked us to live in the light rather than run and hide in the darkness of doubt and despair. 
Just as the wise men left the baby Jesus to tell the story of hope and peace, you call to participate in your story, which is a love story for the world. The journey in this light is risky. It means that we will have to be intentional about our service to you, giving you our best and offering hope and light to others. To remind us of the hope a fresh new year offers, May your spirit keep us focused on lessons learned and goodness experienced in each day. In this new year, we have brought before you names and situations of others for whom light seems to be a stranger. They struggle with ill health, loss of loved ones, and anxiety, and so we place them in your care. We know you hear our pleas on their behalf as well as the cares so deep in our hearts we cannot bring them to words. Let your light shine on them, bringing healing and hope. Help us to be bearers of that light in all that we do. We humbly ask all these things as we also pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. <laughs> The scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. O Holy One, pour out your spirit among us, whether gathered or scattered. May it move in, through, and among us, opening our ears, our hearts, and our minds to hear what you would have us hear through this, your servant. Amen. So there were three corporate executives having a conversation, each of them taking turns defining what status meant. And how to know when you finally arrived. One said, I'll tell you what real status is. It's being invited to the White House for a personal conversation with the president. Another replied, no, that's not it. You know you've arrived when you've been invited to the White House for a personal conversation with the president. The hotline rings, and he just looks at it and decides not to answer it. 
the third executive said, no, 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 you both have it all wrong. Real status is when you're invited to the White House for a personal conversation with the president, the hotline rings, the president answers it and says, here, it's for you. <laughs> so my question is, who would want that kind of status? On this first Sunday in January in the church calendar, we observe the day of Epiphany. Now, Epiphany is the time when we move on from the waiting of Advent through Christmas and look forward to the future full of hope and possibility. The word Epiphany means a sudden revelation of the meaning of something. And so we celebrate the belief that in the birth of Christ at Christmas, God has entered into our world and into our lives. Epiphany challenges us to ask these questions. Where do we see God present among us, and what does it mean to have status in the kingdom of God and live out God's story in the world? In other words, what's the rest of the story for us? It's like the punchline in the hotline joke. Here you've seen the revelation of God in the world. God's revealed what God's power looks like. God came into the world in the form of a helpless baby. This is what status in God's kingdom looks like. Now what will you do with that understanding? Every once in a while, whenever I read the scripture, I always wonder what happened after the wise men left Bethlehem. You know, what happened when they went back by that other route to the east where they came from? They were important and powerful men coming to pay tribute to the new king of the Jews. They followed the star thinking they were going to find a royal king and instead found a helpless infant baby born to a poor young couple in a stable, no less. I would love to have been on a fly on the back of one of those camels to hear the conversation they had on the way back home. Hey, man, wasn't that a surprise? No kidding. I was expecting a palace. Me too. I thought he would have people waiting on him hand and foot. Yeah, but it was amazing, wasn't it? It sure was. And then they travel on in silence for a while. After a bit, one of them says, Despite appearances, I know I was in the presence of God, and no one can tell me anything different. The others nod, and they ride off lost in their own thoughts, full of hope and joy. The end. But wait, that isn't the end, but the beginning. The wise men were mistaken in their belief that they would find a king in a royal palace, someone with privilege and power. Instead, they found a lowly infant in a smelly stable. Did they go back and tell everyone that they saw Emmanuel, God with us? Did they live the rest of their lives as if they really believed God was with and among them? We don't know. Perhaps the more important question is, do we believe that God is truly with us? Because the Epiphany story is really good news. It's the news that God is found come to life in the humility of a baby born in a stable. And so what that means for us is that God can be found anywhere, especially in the most unlikely places. And like the wise men, we're called to look for God everywhere. God revealed at Christmas in the humblest of ways, is the revelation that status in God's kingdom comes to those who have the least power in the world. 2,000 years ago, the wise men followed a star, a bright light that shone above a humble stable with a baby inside, born to be the light of the world. No doubt they took the message of that light back with them. And that's the important part of the story for us. Like the wise men, we're called to be bearers of that light as well. Now, I don't know about you, but by this last year's end, I was weary of hearing about how horrid 2020 was. And weary, too, of all the jokes about it. Now, this is, in not, this is not in any way to diminish the loss and pain so many people have experienced. Not at all. And I believe humor is an excellent coping and healing mechanism. So what I mean to say is that what was, was, and now it's past. And so to that end, I decided this last week to reach out on Facebook and ask folk what lesson or lessons they learned in 2020 
and or the goodness that they experienced, kind of as a refocusing. And I was truly surprised at the number of responses I received. And I have permission to share some of them with you. And because it was an extensive list, I've condensed the comments by themes. The first theme that I noticed was resilience. Many respondents told me that they found out how resilient they are. Second one was kindness, selflessness, and sacrifice. In a year when it would be easy to be cynical and angry all the time, folks were able to see through the ugliness and pain to the many who stepped up to help others, many at the expense of their own lives. Technology. Zoom. It enabled us to connect and stay connected with loved ones from afar, learning how to maneuver through technology and actually acquiring new skills in the process. Closeness and intimacy. Spending more quality time with loved ones and the ability to focus on family more. Adaptability and creativity. Some learn new skills because they had to. Others for the joy of it because they had more time. Learning how to cope with multiple changes and being okay with it. Here's a biggie. Learning that the church is so much more than the building. Simplifying and prioritizing. Letting go of too many material things. Finding out what is truly important in life. Learning patience and trust, letting go and letting God. Peace, tranquility, and solitude. Learning how to live alone and enjoy the peace and solitude that it affords. Deepen spirituality. A few respondents spoke of the time they were able to have to go deeper with their relationship with God, their meditation, and their spiritual practices. As I said, those are encapsulations of the many responses I received. I found so many of them poignant and actually uplifting. Perhaps they'll help you as you take stock going forward into this new year. Maybe you will have your own epiphany. And so I'm encouraging you to focus on the good going forward. God is doing a new thing, always. So... Can we be open to what it is and say yes? Let us leave behind as best we can what does not soothe or serve our souls. On the Sunday that we celebrate Epiphany, some churches have a tradition to pass out star words. This practice of passing out star words has grown in popularity recently. On the day that we remember the star that led the Magi to Jesus, we pass out pieces of paper cut into star shapes with a printed word. The star led the Magi to Jesus. The star word is what helps guide us forward into the new year. In the past, my star words have been surprising and enlightening. It's amazing. So if you'd like to have your own star word, I can get one to you, or you can choose your own. Let me know. What I love most about the story of the Magi following the star to Jesus is how they did not go back to Herod as he requested, but rather they went home by another road. Another road. We too can take another road. We don't have to go back to the old ways. We can look forward with the lessons that we've learned. So I invite you to join me. Let's go forward with God's grace, taking with us all the goodness and the lessons of the past and the promises God has made for our future. This is it, a new dawn, a new season, another road, fresh hope, the beginning. Believe in the good, I'm ready, are you? And all God's people say, amen. You are invited to sing along the final hymn, The First Noel.
This is Holy Communion for a Journey Sunday. It is the second Sunday of Christmas, the Sunday three days after New Year, and three days before the Epiphany. And in the old song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, it is the ninth day, the day when the gift is nine people dancing. So come to this table of one star for following, bread and cup for sharing, three days of New Year, at least four still traveling camels, and many, many hopes for the world. Come to this table even if you want to be laying everything down because you are so weary of being fearful, isolated, or essential to everyone but you. Come to this table if you are swimming in Zoom, virtual education, financial risk, or grief. Come to this table if you milked all the joy from Christmas, enough to carry you into 2021, or not nearly enough. Come to this table even though you are carrying many burdens where you need to be healed. Come to this table whether friend or stranger, whether you know the old story, whether you need to follow another path home, and if you wish to partake of the warm bread and sweet cup shared right now. We remember in this new year with the fearfulness of the pandemic and hope that it will be ended, not only the journey of the Magi guided by a star, but all the oases where they rested and the people they met who lived in those places and shared their food. We remember a child born to change everything and the endangerment of many children. And we remember that the baby named Jesus grew up to help people in their hurting and loss. Traveled as many roads as we do and taught us with simple words we can understand and stories we come to many times to find new meaning. At Passover, he blessed unleavened bread and poured wine and loved freely. At Emmaus, he prayed and broke the bread, but sent us to find the cup in the world. Emmanuel, God, you are with us in our lonely nights following so distant stars. We are carrying our old years and opening our new ones, always hoping for an oasis for each of us and a blessing on earth in the form of bread in our hands and the cup we lift. And so on the night before he was to be betrayed, Jesus sat at a table in the upper room with his disciples. And he took bread, he blessed it, gave thanks, and broke it, saying, This is the bread of life. Whenever you eat this, remember me. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, blessed it, and said, This is the cup of the covenant. And whenever you drink this, remember me. So may this bread and cup be so sacred we never lose the star shine. Ignore a new year embedded in every day, or forget the Christ of the dance and the invitation to joy. This is the bread of life. Take and eat. And this is a cup of blessing. Let us drink deeply so that we may always travel on. Let us pray. God, we thank you that when the star in the sky is gone, the kings and the princes are home, the shepherds are back with their flocks, and we are tempted to pack the story away this very bread and cup gives us the hope and courage to begin the, the true work of Christmas. Help us to find the lost, heal the broken, feed the hungry, release the prisoners, rebuild the nations, and bring peace among all. And make heart music so that everyone can dance. Amen.
Our worship is over, but our service has just begun. Go out, be the light, be a star for someone in need, and sprinkle God's love wastefully like confetti, and go forth in peace. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.